in this video we'll be discussing about spirochytes so first we'll see about the morphology of spirochytes they are long helically coiled crog screw shaped uh, ce uh, cells okay so this is the uh, structure of spirochytes which is screw shaped organism okay so it is a gram negative bacteria and they have double membrane uh, size of this spirochytes will be 3n 500 mu m okay so this orange color will be the first membrane and this green color will be second membrane so uh, totally it has a double membrane and uh, size of this will be the breadth will be 3 and the uh, length will be 500 mu m okay so endoflagella is present for the motility okay endoflagella is nothing but the flagella will be present inside the bacteria okay for its movement okay has it moves uh, like twisting motion so uh, twisting mo for twisting motion mainly the flagella will be present uh, inside inside the body of the organism okay so endolo endoflagella helps in the twisting movement it helps to move through the thick mucus and attached to the cells so mainly this twisting movement will help uh, to get into through, uh, through the thick mucous membrane okay so they are chemoheterotrophic in nature so both chemotrophs and heterotrophs chemotrophs means energy comes from the oxidation of many inorganic and organic compounds and heterotrophs means carbon source is taken uh, is reduced okay here oxidation will take place here reducing will take place so carbon source is reduced performed from the other organism okay so some spirochytes are pathogenic to humans uh, so only some of the kinds of uh, spirochytes will be pathogenic to humans now let's see about the classification of spirochytes so it belongs to the order spirochetales and the family uh, so when we see the family it divides into two families that is spirochetaceae and leptospiraceae okay so these are these two are the family of spirochetales okay so in spirochetaceae uh, the genus will be like spirocheta christospira and triponema borrelia and in le uh, leptospiraceae uh, the genus will be leptospira okay so triponema borrelia and leptospira is very pathogenic okay comparatively these uh, spirochyta and christospira these three organism or this three genius will be very pathogenic to humans when we see uh, the spirochetaceae genus it is non-hooked type of organism and it is aerobic and facultative anaerobic also microaerophilic okay when we see leptospira this will be obligate aerobes only grows in the presence of oxygen and it is hooked hooked type of organism okay so as i said earlier triponema borrelia leptospira are very pathogenic and triponema causes syphilis leptospira causes leptospirosis and borrelia causes slime fever so this is all about the classification of spirochytes now let's see about the disease which is caused by uh, Triponema palladium which belongs to the species of Spirochetaceae. Okay, so syphilis is caused by Triponema palladium which is a type of bacteria. It is sexually transmitted disease and in first stages it is uh, treatable, with, treatable with penicillin. Okay, if the stages are increasing or stage, uh, stages get into chronic um, no treatment is available for curing this type of disease okay so may cause this type syphilis may cause um, damage to most of the organs okay so it mimics many different conditions like uh, it, it shows a similar conditions of to all STDs okay so uh, the symptoms of uh, HIV and syphilis will be almost the same so we, we, we may not be able to differentiate uh, either it is uh, HIV or syphilis so that so that's why it is called mimics it mimics uh, many different conditions and uh, patients are at high risk of HIV as I said earlier uh, uh, scientists or doctors will be unable to predict the type of disease either it is syphilis or HIV so 
so the risk of hiv gets higher increases okay so now, now let's see about the transmission of the syphilis so as we know syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease so obviously it is caused by the sexual contact and having multiple sex uh, partners okay so also it may transmit from mother to child if a mother is infected with syphilis and it gives birth to the child so we know uh, so during pregnancy uh, the child also get infected by the syphilis okay so during blood, blood transfer uh, like infusion and transfusion and uh, using uh, infected person's needle so we may get uh, transferred by the blood also and uh, by the skin lesions like infected person's uh, skins will be if if it is like uh, transmitted so the syphilis also get transmitted okay so now let's see about the symptomatic stage of syphilis so there are three symptomatic stages namely primary secondary and tertiary okay primary stage uh, stage will be like uh, three to six days and no symptoms will occur and gets into the secondary stage and uh, day, uh, it may get or uh, it may affect with days to months and uh, here in secondary stage uh, symptoms will occur and then no symptoms will occur so in between secondary and tertiary stage it is called a latent period so after that a patient will move on to the tertiary stage which is a chronic stage of the syphilis okay so now let's see about the pathogenesis okay so if a person gets exposure exposure either by either uh, any of these are uh, transmission if a person get uh, exposed uh, incubation period will be three to four weeks okay so during that week i've drawn green line here so that uh, line will be asymptomatic stage so during the exposure time we will not see any type of uh, symptoms occurring in the body or in patients okay so only the um, only the organism will get deposited in the body okay then the uh, primary stage occurs where the symptoms will start showing in the person okay after that um, after that uh, zero to six weeks the uh, patient will have no symptoms and again uh, if it if it doesn't get into the bloodstream means the patient will not have syphilis if it gets to bloodstream means uh, the patient will undergo the secondary stage which is uh, symptomatic okay then after that uh, he'll undergo a latent pre period in latent period um, same uh, no symptoms will occur so it may take years to decades to move on to tertiary okay so so that's all about the uh, pathogenesis we'll discuss what are the symptoms occurring in primary secondary and tertiary stages during primary stage a person will uh, appear with a single canker in the body okay so that type of canker will be painless and uh, firm and open source with all these type of uh, symptoms this canker will appear in primary stage only single canker appears mainly in the region of penis anus and rectum okay so this will heal what canker canker will heal without treatment also and uh, it will not be uh, noticed by the patients okay at first stage only a single type of canker is occurring so then no um, noticing the patient will, will not be able to notice in first stages and if it is not treated means uh, the bacteria gets into the bloodstream and obviously the patient will undergo the secondary stage after six weeks okay so in secondary stage a body wise uh, canker rashes all over the body the canker start appearing with uh, heavy rashes okay so rash is po prominent in palms and soles it will start showing in the palms and soles and with uh, rashes will appear with uh, patient with will be having fever swollen lymph nodes sores in mouth armpits and genital and anus and in these regions the canker will start appearing okay also the person will have headache and sore throat jaundice and hair loss so this is all the symptoms occurring in the secondary stages if again the patient is not taking any type of treatment uh, obviously 
this uh, person will undergo the uh, latent stage okay where the um, patient will occur with no symptoms okay so after that in tertiary stage uh, they may have a gummatous type of syphilis cardiovascular syphilis and neurosyphilis gummatous syphilis is nothing but a uh, gums in an organ any organs okay there will be pain or destruction in the gums and the organs mainly between skin bone and liver okay so in this uh, region uh, some type of uh, gum destruction will start appearing so that is known as gammatous syphilis and next is cardiovascular syphilis okay it causes mainly in heart valves like aortic and aortic valve disease it is called okay so these type of uh, symptoms are seen in cardiovascular syphilis and in neurosyphilis a person will occur occur with um, meningitis stroke vision loss and speech disorder so this is all the symptoms of neurosyphilis okay so after uh, each stage or after uh, each of the uh, symptoms occurring we have to consult a doctor okay so what are the lab diagnosis da done for the type of syphilis infection or syphilis diseases uh, first we'll be do, uh, doing serological test Now, serological test is nothing but to find the concentration of antibody antibodies uh, present in the blood okay so for checking that we'll be doing a serological test mainly we'll be taking here is blood and cns fluid okay so blood and cns fluid are the samples taking here okay so first non specific uh, so non specific we'll be doing rpr test and vdrl test okay rpr test is done to to check the hooks present in the blood and uh, vdrl test is done for the screening for syphilis so so these are the two type of non specific um, lab diagnosis and after confirming the uh, organism we'll be do doing treponemal test as we know treponema pallidum is causing this type of syphilis so we have to do treponemal test okay so for that we'll be doing tpha is nothing but treponema pallidum hemagglutination assay fluorescent treponemal antibiotic absorption test and fluorescent treponemal antibiotic absorption double straining okay so these are all the treponemal test and after uh, confirming this treponemal test we'll be observing under dark field microscope dark field microscope we'll be able to see the um, canker uh, present in these pyrocytes okay helps to visualize the pyrocytes from the canker exudates so this is all about the diagnosis done for the syphilis so now after di lab diagnosis we'll suggest a treatment so for the uh, stage 1 2 and latent period till latent period we'll suggest with one injection of in intramuscular intramuscular injection will be suggested okay so penicillin and benzathione so these are the antibiotics given in 2 to 4 million units okay also neurosyphilis and in non pregnant women like uh, they if they have allergy to penicillin they can use doxycycline and ceftriaxone as in alternator of penicillin okay so uh as a prevention we have to um, maintain good hygiene practices and uh, limiting sex partners and using condoms will be a best a uh, preventing measures prevention me measures to avoid uh, uh, having syphilis disease okay so this is all about this video so i hope you enjoyed and had a good time thank you